guys, welcome to my little paintbrush. My name is Miss Cami, and I'm excited to go deep into the ocean with you guys today. We're going to paint a really cute clownfish together. So I hope you came excited and ready to create. Remember that you can pause, rewind, or fast forward this video. So if at any point I am painting too fast for you, please don't try and rush and keep up. Just pause and go at your own pace. Also, you can add any additional details that you want and make this your very own in any way. We love that. So stay true to yourself while we paint and let's just have a good time together. I'm gonna start with a good size flat. Depending on the age of the artist, this might be a little smaller for you and that's totally fine. You just want something with a flat head, okay? I'm gonna go right into some clean water, loosen up my bristles. Here's our palette today, super fun. Uh, we've got some good complementary colors happening and some good neutrals. So we're gonna start with our ocean background, okay? So I'm gonna take just a little bit of my turquoise and I'm gonna mix it with quite a bit of my white. Just pretty rough, I don't need a super clean mix because I like the way it kind of begins to um, offload in different shades in the background. So just kind of give it a nice rough mix. And then we're going to just begin to fill in our background. I want you to notice something in particular. When I get close to my subject, I press all my bristles and fan them out. Okay. That helps me get that clean edge. So. A lot of times, especially if we're new to art and to painting, we're kind of scared of our brush and we're scared to press hard on our brush, but fanning it out like that will really help you, like I said, to get a clean edge, okay? Now at any point, if your paint begins to feel sticky, it needs more water, so really utilize that water, okay? We're just gonna go around our fish like that, okay? And if you get some inside of your clown fish or maybe in your little sandy bottom of your ocean, that's okay, we're just doing the best we can, but this is um, hand painted, it's gonna look that way, so don't feel overwhelmed with perfection here. You just don't want to get sloppy. You want to put your best effort into it, but mistakes happen and typically we can we can fix a lot of those things too. So just enjoy it. Now if you're painting on a wrap canvas, I suggest and encourage you to wrap your edges. Okay, so go ahead and take your paint all the way around your edges. We're big fans of wrapping our canvases in our in-class studio, uh, or in-studio classes, sorry, um, because then we have a nice completed piece that we can display and be super proud of. So go ahead and wrap those edges as you go. All right, we're just about done. I'm gonna come up on this last little area there, and then down through here. So that's our background, pretty quick, but before I rinse my brush out, I wanna add some highlights, kind of on the top of my fish, and some shadow underneath, okay? So just keep that background color on your brush, and for our highlights, we're gonna go into our white. See, I just loaded half of my brush, just a corner of it, and see, I'm just gonna brush this white paint, this lighter, It'll just kind of blend into your background and you might even have a moment of thinking to yourself, why on earth are we doing this step? I can't really see it. When it all dries, you're really gonna be able to appreciate um, that it gets lighter towards your fish here, which will draw attention to it. And it gives this idea that there's a light coming somewhere from above the ocean and we know that it's probably the sunlight super fun okay 
Now for underneath our fish, we know our fish is swimming and there's gonna be a shadow cast. So we're gonna just leave that background color, that ocean color on our brush again. And this time we're gonna go into our darker turquoise and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use that darker edge to indicate a shadow happening. Oops, got a little bit in my fish here, but like I said, we're not gonna stop and panic about those things. We're just gonna keep painting because it'll be just fine. So I wanna come up a little bit, but not all the way. Right, I want my shadow to remain sort of underneath here. Okay, so we're just going to keep playing off of that idea. And this one is just so fun. I love clownfish in general. I just think they're beautiful and super cute. But also the colors that we're using are just a lot of fun. So you can go back with your lighter color and kind of blend those edges a little bit. But you really just want to focus on having that nice darkness kind of coming um, off the fish here underneath it. Okay. All right, so we've got our background in, ready to go. Let's wash our brush really, really good. You can hear it swishing around for me. It's really important that we clean our brush thoroughly and that requires kind of making some bubbles in our water when we do that. All right, let's go to our sandy ocean bottom here. We're gonna use this brown. I'm gonna take some white again over to my brown and just kind of once again, give a rough little mix until I have a color that I'm happy with. It doesn't take a lot of brown, you guys. It's more white than brown, okay? You can see, got that in there. And now I'm just gonna paint this in, okay? Now again, if you're wrapping your canvas, go ahead and wrap the bottom of your canvas and around the edge here. So you have that nice completed look. Once again, you can see I flatten all my bristles, press them together when I get up close to any edge that I want to be a little bit smooth and clean. Now, we talked about our fish casting that shadow, so we're going to play off of that idea again. This time we're going to put that darker brown on one edge of our brush, and we're going to take that dark edge on top of this little sort of rolling sand, right? It kind of looks like a rolling hill. Keeping my darker paint up there. Okay, if I need some water, I'll use clean water to dilute my paint, not dirty water. So it's, it's a good idea if you can to have a couple of jars or cups of water with you. That way, in the event that you need to kind of loosen up your paint, you have that nice clean water to do it with. I like to kind of add a little bit more ripple shadow happening. Now down on the bottom of the ocean floor here, we've got lots going on, right? I just gotta tighten my, getting some lumps here, so I'm just gonna pull my paper tight here. So you can really just, if you wanted to put little rocks or seashells here on your ocean floor. You could definitely do that. You could play, play on that as much as you want. But there we go. We've got our water and we've got our sand underneath. So now we're ready to dive right in to our fish. So let's give our brush another really, really good wash. 
we are working in those complementary colors with the blue and the orange. So although they're beautiful next to each other, if they mix, they're going to mud out. So we want to be careful with that. So of course, we're going to go with orange here, but I like to add just a touch, not too much, just a touch of white to my orange. This just helps with coverage. Orange can be a bit shy. It's not as pigmented. So to help with that, if you just add a little bit of white, it will make a big difference. Okay. And again, I'm going to use my water to really loosen that up. So it goes on nice and smooth for me. So nice and loose. We're going to start down here on our little tail. Now, orange will a lot of times require multiple coats of paint. So that just depends on how much white you mix with your orange and how thick you're putting your paint to your canvas. So if you're going, oh dear, this isn't really covering well for me, just keep in mind, you can go to each of your sections of orange and then go back and do another coat real quick and that's not a big deal okay so now we're going to go in this spot and we've got all these things that are orange so it kind of makes it easy if you're using our paint kit this image is already on your canvas for you and if it is you can see with what we've traced that with, you can paint right over and still see those lines. Okay. If you don't have our paint kit, you can follow the links below to our website where you can get the pattern for this. And then you just want to trace with a good lead or graphite pencil. If you want to be able to see, um, your lines through the paint. If you want the paint to just kind of blend into your canvas, then just use a colored pencil and you'll have that result. You can see I'm still using my big flat. I haven't changed brushes um, because I don't feel the need to. But if this if a large brush is just too overwhelming for you, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, it really depends on the age and size of the artist. So if, if a big flat brush is too much for you, just use a smaller one. And that's not a big deal at all. Okay, we're just filling in all of our orange here. I'm going pretty thick with this. And the temperature of the room I'm painting in is drying the paint really fast. So I'm kind of able to do a, kind of two coats in one. So I'm not going to go back and do a second coat. But again, if you want to remember after I'm done with my orange, you can pause and put another layer of orange on if you can see um, too much of your canvas and too many brush strokes and that's bothering you. So as we go around our eye here, that's kind of a tricky part because it's a circle. So just do your best and remember that you can flip your canvas to so many different angles to get a better position for yourself to be able to paint around that eye. So typically I would either flip my canvas around or I would hold it on my lap even sometimes, even though that's not the best position to paint in. Um, but I can't right now because of filming. So I'm going to leave it here. But you can, of course, adjust however you need to. So I'm going to, again, just do my best around this eye. Notice I'm 
basing my canvas with the toe of my brush, okay? That makes a difference too, because you can get into smaller sections if you're facing your canvas with the toe instead of the flat, okay? So instead of having to switch brushes to get into little sections of my fish, I can just go from the flat like this, this is the flat using and fanning all the bristles to the toe, which is a lot smaller stroke. And like I said before, I'm able to kind of go back and do this other layer because all these lights that are shining on me from filming are drying this paint so fast. So I can kind of do that. But if I were you and you're seeing a lot of brush strokes, just pause this right now and do a second layer on all your orange, okay? But for me, that's all done. So I'm gonna give my brush a super duper good wash because I'm going to go to white paint next. And I'm gonna go into my big eye. I love how big this eye is in comparison to the fish. It's massive and that's super cute. I love to do things with big eyes probably because my daughter is such a fan of that. But I'm gonna wash this brush really, really good. And then I'm going to go into clean water and I'm gonna rinse it. And that just ensures that I have double um, cleanliness on my brush. So I'm gonna go into some white paint here. I'm just trying to scoop some of my white. A lot of it got kind of messy, but I was able to spare some here and loosen it up. And then I'm gonna just fill in my eye. Now, if you got a lot of orange in your stripes or maybe some in your white stripes or maybe some background, some ocean color, you can fill your stripes in. I'm not going to. I just want to wet the surface of the eye so that I can blend in a shadow around the eye. So once I wet the surface, I'm using my flat brush with white paint and I dip a corner into black paint and then I brush it through a few times on my plate or palette, whatever you're using. And then I take that edge and I'm gonna follow it all around my eye, just blending as I go. Okay, loose paint will make a difference for you. So if it's feeling super thick, oh, too loose, you'll get water like that. I flipped my brush aside here. Okay, so you don't want those drips that I'm getting here. That means your paint is too loose and we'll just kind of dab some of that moisture out. Okay, but okay, I'll just kind of blend it in. You do want it loose enough that you can go around this eye and create a nice clean edge without too much of a struggle, okay? So just keep working it. It takes a minute because again, this is a circle. And circles, no matter how long you've been painting and how experienced you are, Circles are tricky, and so you really just have to be patient with yourself. Now the reason that this edge isn't super black, even though I'm using black paint, is because I'm blending so much. See how I just, I keep going around, and then I blend back into it, and so it's creating a nice gray edge instead of a harsh black one. that's how you're going to get that effect. Just by going around and around your eye until you have that nice circle. Okay, and it's okay if it gets darker within the eye too. That's totally fine. I'm going to try and clean it up a little bit now if 
that I have a good blend. There we go. Again, you can, you can lay this canvas on a flat surface to do this step. If this circle idea is just giving you so many problems, know that that's totally normal and know that you can move your canvas. Now I'm going to kind of wash out that black and just take some clean white and just go through the center of my eye, make sure that it's mostly nice and bright white there. If I lost any of that, and just kind of bring it back like so. Okay, that's the hardest part of your painting, I promise. That you are past the difficult part. Okay, so for this next step, I am gonna go to a smaller flat because I'm gonna do some bubbles. And so I just want that smaller flat brush. All you gotta do is get it wet, and then you're gonna come to your white paint and just dip the corner of it in white, okay? We've done this all during this painting. You're just using the corner of your brush. And then you just kind of do a C and then another C. You kind of just wrap it around. You see that? Just like parentheses. And you get this circle, okay? If you can go all the way around, more power to you. But you just start making your bubbles. Some can go off the page. Some can be bigger than others. I love diverse bubbles because bubbles in general are not the same size so have some fun with that and we'll come over here and we'll do a couple right here as well just using that edge of our brush okay one big one right there and then we'll do a little one of going off the edge so now the bubbles are going up we didn't do any underneath because they're going to float upwards and that's why we steered clear of underneath our clownfish okay we're going to keep going with some highlights now using the same technique if you need to dampen your brush a little bit more just dip it in some water i'm going to come down to my uh, tail there and do a highlight okay again we're just using that edge of our brush and it's nice and damp right okay so it's giving us this nice sort of faded highlight instead of a stiff um, strong line we're getting this nice kind of uh, faded look that I like better than a harsh outline look Just brush over it a few times if it's not coming off of your brush very well. You can check the water consistency of your brush as well. Do you have enough water? Is your brush too dry? If it's too dry, you're just going to get broken brush strokes. Do that top fin there. Looking good. We're just about done with the highlights. Let me dampen my brush one more time. Okay, and I'll do a few up here just lightly right there. And then I'll do one kind of on the chin just to brighten that section up a little bit. Okay, fantastic. Let's wash our brush out. Give it a good rinse, set this one aside, 
I'm gonna go back to my biggest brush real quick for my little eye, the black part of my eye. I'm gonna use the bottom of my brush like a stamp, okay? And I'm gonna dip it in black paint, swirl it around a minute. And then what I'll get is like a chocolate chip happening on the bottom of my brush. And that's what I want. I want sort of that drip coming off. That means my brush has the amount of paint on it that it needs. And then I'm gonna come over here and start to swirl. It needs some more paint there. Start to swirl my eye. Okay, and that's it. I, I wanna keep it small, right? We've got um, a variance in our sizes, right? We've got the big white and then the little tiny black. That's super fun. All right, so we'll let that dry. And while it dries, we've got to outline our fish. And I know this is always sort of a drag for people. They don't wanna do the lines. The lines are intimidating. But here's a few tips. Number one, make sure your paint is thinned out. You want the consistency of melted ice cream. So you don't want water, um, but you don't want that glueiness that your, your paint is on your plate right now. You want to loosen it to that melted ice cream phase. And then just take your time and be kind to yourself because lines are tricky and it takes a lot of practice to get right. And that's why we do them so much, <laughs> because we like to practice our lines. So here I am using my water and my brush to loosen up my black paint. Now I've grabbed a detail brush. So this is the smallest brush that I have, and it gives me those nice little lines. Be nice to your detail brush. That's the only way you're gonna have those good bristles. I always tell the kids, you don't want to give your detail brush a bad hair day or else it won't really work with you. So loosen it up before you begin and then just keep in mind that pressure is everything. So if you push hard on your brush, you're going to get a thick line, which is fine. Nothing wrong with a thick line, but if you want a little line, just don't press as hard. And then we're just going to start in sections. Okay, so I don't try and do the whole fish in one stroke, right? We're just doing sections at a time. That way we take that pressure off of ourselves. And we can go back and we can just finish a stroke little by little. So I can still see that line, that pencil line, remember? So I'm gonna follow it right through there, all the way down. So I'm working at the top of my canvas down, that way I can rest my palm on my canvas and not smear my paint, okay? So that's a good trick to keep in mind when you're doing lines like this. Start at the top of your canvas and work your way down. All the way around here. Okay, so it seems overwhelming, but there's not a ton of lines that we have to do. And most of them are just straight. So that's nice. Come up here. So already we're about halfway done with our lines, okay? So if I'm going too fast for you, remember you can, you can pause this and you can go at your own pace. Nothing wrong with that. Your lines should go onto your canvas though, just as smooth as you see happening here and that really comes down to that time I took to thin out my paint. People ask me all the time about lines. How do you, how is your signature so, you know, thin and small? Or how do you get such thin lines? Or And the 
I can't stress enough the consistency of your paint. As a new artist, you have to understand that your paint doesn't come out of the tube exactly the consistency it needs to be. Acrylic paint needs water. So we have to dilute it. All right, so we'll just keep going here. We're coming down to the bottom. Look at this cute guy. I just love it so much. Okay, now we'll do this in here. And come around, it's kind of like a triangle here. So a shape that we're all familiar with. And that's nice in, in art. If we can find shapes that we are familiar with, it really helps. Now I have a little line where my smile is. You won't have that so that you have the option of doing a different expression. But I'm just going to put my smile in right there because my fish is a happy fish okay let's rinse the black out really really good we are just about done you guys we're gonna get some white on our brush and come up to our bubble so it's okay if it has a little bit of that turquoise in it and we're just gonna add these little reflections in our bubbles they're just like dashes just think of dashes in your bubbles. It'll just help them pop a little bit more. Okay, really easy. It's a thing that, it's a step that I don't want you to think about too much. If you think about it, it's not gonna look natural. Then I'm just gonna highlight a little bit on the top of the smile so that you can see it. And then I'm gonna flip my brush around, go back to my stamping method here but this time with white paint, get a white chocolate chip on the bottom of my brush and go for that cute little reflection in the eye. So important to have that in your eye when you're painting because it just brings everything to life. You guys, we're ready for a signature. I cannot believe how fast this little fish was painted in. Let's go ahead and sign our art. We always should. Be proud of our work. I hope you guys love it. I have so much fun painting this clownfish. I love looking at it in my studio. It just makes me happy. And I would love to see your version of this painting. So tag us on social media at my little paintbrush and give us a thumbs up, please. If you liked this video and you love painting with us, we love you to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you never miss free video tutorials. Thanks for painting with me guys. Have a good night.